let's talk about situational leadership. In this video, I want to give you an overview of what it is and how to use it. Leading people either as the head of a business or as a project team leader is rarely simple. To be effective, you'll need to flex your approach to the people and circumstances involved. You're not going to get far using a one-size-fits-all approach. Once you've prioritized the tasks to be completed, you should consider the willingness and ability of the people in your team to complete them. This can be described as their readiness level. Successful leaders will then match their leadership style to the unique circumstances of the task. This is known as situational leadership. Paul Hersey and Ken Blanchard developed a model identifying four main leadership styles. These can be adopted according to the perceived readiness level, also known as the development or maturity level, of the person to be led or managed in the task in order to get the best results. For example, if you have someone in your team that is very keen to work on a task but lacks the ability to complete it, you might adopt a coaching approach. This involves clearly defining roles and tasks before asking for ideas and suggestions. The final decision is still yours, but communication is two-way and you act as coach to the person completing the task. However, someone that lacks both the will and skill to complete a task will need a lot of time from you as their manager. A directing leadership style would be adopted, requiring you to guide the team member through every step of the task, telling them what to do. Having identified the task and leadership style required, you then need to agree with your team the kind of leadership style that they need to ensure success. Let's look at the right leadership style for each of the four readiness levels. So, R1. These are colleagues who lack the knowledge, skills or confidence to work on their own and they often need to be pushed to take the task on. They need directing, so S1. Here, leaders tell their people what to do and how to do it. R2 colleagues might be willing to work on the task, but they still don't have the skills to complete it successfully. Here, they need coaching, or S2. Leaders provide information and direction, but there's more communication with followers. Leaders need to sell their message to get people on board. R3 colleagues are ready and willing to help with the task. They have more skills than the R2 group, but they're still not confident in their abilities. They need supporting, so S3. Here, you should focus more on the relationship and less on direction. The leader works with the team and shares decision-making responsibilities. Our four colleagues are able to work on their own. They have high confidence and strong skills and they're committed to the task. The appropriate style here is delegating, so S4. Leaders pass most of the responsibility onto the follower or group. The leaders still monitor progress, but they're less involved in decisions. So that's an introduction to situational leadership. How can you use this in your work?